Hey guys, John here from Dulgens. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, it's 2023 and yes, I haven't made a video since a while. So here's actually my first video for this year. So I wanted to take this out of the way. And this video, it's all about what's in my camera bag or what's in my camera case. So this is my new case, HP RC 2550W. Now, if you haven't seen my first video, what's in my camera bag, please take a look. The thing is, I'm doing now interiors, I'm doing fashion work, I'm doing portraits, I'm doing weddings. So my camera gear increases. I mean, I have a couple of lenses, uh, two bodies. Uh, flash and so on. So this will take much more space and I want them to be safe. So I think having a case like this, it will help you to keep your uh, gear much safer. I know it's not so fa fashionable like my first, uh, <laughs> on my first video, but I have uh, a camera bag, a uh, leather camera bag. I still have that bag. I love it. I can carry it with me, especially when I want to carry just one camera and one lens, then it's uh, much suitable for that kind of uh, carrying around the camera than to carry all your gear in uh, a leather bag. Without further ado, let's see what is actually in my camera case. So I'm going to start with my main camera, which I'm filming right now is the Canon EOS R, which I have a kind of a love-hate relationship, that because of the horrible ergonomics. Otherwise, once you learn about it and you start uh, searching in the menu uh, for all the settings, uh, okay, you're going to get used to it. But otherwise, the quality is just great. I love the quality of the camera, uh, the images. I love the quality of the camera. The build of it is, is very good. Um, the one other thing, which is, uh, let's say, uh, negative, uh, if you want to take it uh, for video, uh, I don't like when it crops too much, especially when uh, I shoot, let's say with a 35, it will uh, crop it uh, if I want to shoot 4K or so on. Another downfall of this camera, it doesn't have dual cards. So yeah, sometimes I feel like I need to have dual cards just for the safety. But uh, by now, I am shooting with, with it for almost two years. I had just one time I lost the photos just because it was only one card and I had to format it. But otherwise, yeah, I do like this camera. I like the tilt screen. I like uh, the quality of it, uh, especially the colors of the Canon, of course. But uh, yeah, otherwise, it's a great camera. It's good for vlogging. It's good for photography, for weddings. I feel like sometimes it's a bit slower to focus. Now with this camera being mirrorless, you can actually see through the viewfinder uh, everything you do. So uh, yeah, your exposure could be uh, much better when you shoot. Now for this camera to work properly, you should buy bigger cards uh, with uh, high speed writing uh, from 170 megabytes per second uh, and higher because then it will be much faster. Now this camera is my main camera, which means I'm shooting almost everything. I'm shooting interiors, I'm shooting weddings, I'm shooting, uh, what else, food. And uh, yeah, I'm not shooting sports because I don't like it anyway. But otherwise, I'm shooting almost everything with this camera. And uh, yeah, I like it. I still love it. Now this camera compared maybe to R5 or something, it's not that great, but I don't care about the latest and the greatest equipment. I care that the camera can do the job, you know? So those cameras are just tools. So it's up to us photographers to do our best with what we got and not spend too much money on the gear. Now, as a backup, I have the 5D Mark III. Now, back in the days, I mean, 10 years ago, I was shooting on a 5D Mark II and I felt in love with the colors of the Canon. And that's why I'm, I just switched from Nikon, shooting almost 10 years on Nikon. 
I switched to Canon. So the thing is, you actually had to work less on color correcting and stuff uh, with Canon. I don't know. This is in my case. I mean, when I place all the photos in the uh, Lightroom, maybe I adjust a little bit uh, uh, the white balance and so on, but I love the colors of Canon. Now, when I'm shooting events, weddings, photo shoots, love stories, uh, or whatever, <laughs> I'm shooting door straps. That means I'm shooting with a 35 mounted on an EOS R and an 85 mounted uh, on a 5D Mark III. Now, why do I still shoot with this camera? Because I still like the ergonomics. I mean, this camera, the 5D Mark III, beats the ergonomics of Canon EOS R by far. So, I mean, you got all your buttons right here, the wire balance, the F drive, the ISO, um, everything is on your hand. And let me tell you, this wheel, it's so, so nice. And of course, all the layout buttons and the rugged body, you cannot beat this. I think the Canon EOS R is not that rugged. And the way this feels into your hand, uh, I like much more the hand grip of, of the Canon 5D Mark III than the EOS R for sure. Maybe I have two big hands, but I don't know. But this is, this is a great camera. It's still great today in 2023. So if you have the money to buy a camera, don't even think to buy the EOS R, buy the 5D Mark III. You know why? Because you're still gonna get a great uh, quality on uh, this camera and uh, it's still good today. And the colors of this is great. And it's cheap right now. I mean, you, I think you can buy, let me see. Canon 5D Mark III eBay. Let's see right now. What's the price of this? Okay, so you can actually buy a 5D Mark III for under 1,000 euro. I mean, it means 600, 700 euro. You can buy a professional camera. And even for today's standard, this camera will do the job. You have, you want to do, shoot weddings, you want to shoot whatever, kids, uh, love stories. Man, this is an amazing, amazing camera. Um, I wish I could have this grip <laughs> and this quality with an EOS R sensor. I think this will be great. But uh, yeah, the thing is, I don't like to spend money on gear. So most of the time I buy my gear second hand. Uh, I don't buy new that because once I bought it new, 25% of that camera will drop immediately. So don't spend your money on the gear. Buy your gear as a tool to make you money. This is a tool to make me money. If it doesn't make me money, if I invest too much money, if I block too much money in it, then it's not good. Anyway, as an idea, I mean, with almost 1,000 euro, you can buy a complete kit. I mean, a 50 millimeter, uh, maybe, maybe a flash uh, from eBay, complete kit with 1,000 euro, and you're ready to shoot photo shoots, maybe even weddings. Now, if you're talking about cameras, I got another one. This is my new <laughs> passion <laughs> for point and shoots. And this is a digital one. Man, I got a few collection right here in the back. So we're gonna talk about it, but the reason I have a camera with me in the bag is to carry this camera wherever I want. It's because it's very small and right now the trend is higher because those point and shoot camera, digital ones especially, they are going uh, crazy right now on the social media, on YouTube and uh, all these platforms and on Instagram. That's because actually they can replace some film cameras since since the film is going uh, in price very um, expensive 
I start to buy those cameras and I really, really love it. And now I'm actually keeping this with me wherever I go. If I leave the house, I take a point to shoot with me. And if I have a photo shoot, I take this point to shoot with me. Why? Because they are fun and they are small and they have pretty cool um, images. I mean, they some of them have even some kind of filters, like they look like film. So I really, really love those point and shoots. See that? And they are very silent, especially this one. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, this one, it's uh, kind of a slide. And it fits in my pocket. See that? I'm going to make a special episode with my all my digital collection. Of course, I'm not willing to spend hundreds and hundreds of euro for a point and shoot. I bought this one for two euro or something. I really love those cameras. They are very fun to use, especially if you going to a trip or you going on vacation or you just want to carry a camera with you instead of carrying a phone, which I don't like to, to shoot on a phone. Um, those cameras are fun and they, they are, um, yeah, they're small and they are cheap right now. So if you get a hands on one of these, buy it because they will go up in value. Now, if I'm shooting weddings, of course, I'm gonna need lights. Normally, I'm shooting with a flash on my camera. So, I have the Godox TT600. Yes, I know, it's not a Canon, it's not the same brand, but who cares about it? But this flash is actually pretty, pretty cheap and it's very good and it's fast i mean and it's well built i love this uh, flash because it's well built and it's very cheap i mean i paid i think 100 euro or something for a, almost a premium flash the only thing uh, on this flash what i don't like is it doesn't have a ttl you know but other than that uh, yeah doesn't matter uh, I mostly shoot like this when I have events or in the back so I can bounce the flash on the ceiling or maybe on the side like this. Now most of the time I'm shooting natural light but when I'm shooting events I'm shooting with this flash attached to the Canon EOS R. That's because I'm shooting with a 35 and the flash. That means I need to have a light source right away uh, with me, uh, especially when I'm doing uh, group photos or I'm just taking shots with the guests uh, at the weddings and stuff, it's good to have a flash on your camera. Now to carry up my cards, I'm using this Tamrak uh, case, which I don't like it that much, but uh, yeah, this is what I got for now and maybe I will change it to a hard case for the cards, but the thing what I like about this is because I can carry the batteries uh, the batteries and the cards are in the same uh, in the same department so I don't have to search for the cards and for the batteries and the thing is I can also put it to my belt you know and carrying it around with me. So when I have to change a card at the wedding or I need to change the battery, I have it right on me. I don't have to go to, to my bag to uh, search for a battery or for, for a card. Now on this case, I'm carrying around three batteries and in total I have four batteries with me, fully charged when I am going to an event. And yes, the cards, the cards. I am having right now, I think, four cards of uh, 120, 28 with 170 uh, megabytes. Come on, focus. Hello, it doesn't want to focus. All right, yeah. So this is a SD card of 128 gigabytes. I finally upgraded from 64 
because it always, you know, I got those full, so I had to change it, and I'm very happy with the 128 gigabytes. Of course, two, 256 gigabytes will be even nicer, but 128 is great. And yes, you need a battery charger. Now for my studio work, I have a Seconic light meter. You know, it's great for when I want to test the lights and uh, the lightning condition. And it's also great for when I'm doing film photography, especially if uh, the camera doesn't have a light meter. This is a great, great tool to use uh, for your uh, photography. And of course my remote, which I'm using with uh, Helichrome lights, when I'm using in the, in the studio. So this is also very good, uh, especially with the lights, they are very good uh, setup. Now let's talk about lenses. You know, in one of my videos, I told you that I bought a new lens. Well, here it is. This is Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 art lens. Now the reason I added this 24 millimeter is because sometimes I feel like I need a little bit more into my frame. I normally like to shoot 35, 50 and 85, but I think this 24 millimeter, uh, it is great when you shoot, uh, let's say interiors and you need a little bit of wider, wider view. Uh, it is a good lens. I have to still get used to it because of the distortion. So I have to find uh, some different angles and uh, lower position and to yeah to straighten up the lines. Uh, but otherwise, it's a great, great lens. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's a great addition to my camera case. Now this 24 millimeter, I'm also using it uh, for video. So when I'm paired with the uh, Canon USR, this will be a crop fa factor and it will be around the 28 or 35 millimeter. I'm not pretty sure, but uh, it is great. I mean, it is wide enough so I can uh, shoot handheld videos if I need to. But uh, yeah, it is a great addition to my um, lenses. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't go too wide than uh, 24 millimeter because I don't like super, super wide lenses. But another thing I want to try with this lens is to do a uh, fashion editorial with the 24 millimeter. I kind of start to like the wider shots right now, even if I like to shoot more with the 85, uh, with the 50 and 35, I think they have some uh, drama when you shoot with the wider lens, especially if you shoot pretty wide open, like 1.4 or something like that, and pretty close up to the subject, especially when you do like fashion editorials and stuff. I think uh, it is super great and I can't wait to try this one. Now the next lens, which is also prime, is my 35, which is mounted on the EOS R, uh, 35 millimeter 1.4, the L glass. So yeah, this is Sigma and that's his Canon L glass. Uh, the thing is why I bought it L glass is because it was cheap and uh, compared to this, if you buy this new, it's almost the same price. Now with 35 millimeter, I like to shoot mounted on my camera uh, almost all the time when I'm having wedding and stuff. So it's my primary kind of lens when I'm shooting weddings. Uh, because it's not too wide and not too long. It's great for interiors and for outdoors, of course, but it's very, very versatile lens. So I like to shoot uh, 35. It's actually my favorite, uh, let's say, uh, standard wide kind of zoom. It's a 1.4, so it's great for low light and so on. It's not that sharp, I don't think it's sharper than the, this 24 millimeter from Sigma, but yeah, it's the first version of Canon uh, glass, so uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I like because it's a little bit softer because I prefer a little bit softer. I don't like super sharp lens like car's eyes and stuff. Not that I hate them or I don't like them, but it's, uh, yeah, I prefer a little bit softer, not so sharp. Now shooting with 35, of course, you have less distortion. So less distortion than a 24 millimeter, which I 
uh, really like and I normally start with a 35 as a wide angle when I'm shooting, especially when I'm shooting uh, interiors, because I told you I'm shooting interiors, I'm shooting weddings, I'm shooting food photography. I would not shoot maybe food photography with a 35 unless I'm doing flat lace or something like that. But uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, yeah, 35, it's great. It has a little bit lower distortion than a 24 and uh, I love it. Now, my next lens, I'm pretty sure you are pretty familiar with it, is the 50 millimeter 1.4 from Canon. This lens it stays on my camera, I think, 70 to 80% of the time, because with this lens, you can actually shoot everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Now, when I started photography, now 12 years ago, I was using a Nikon D40, I know, maybe some of you, you don't even know what is that. So I started with a D40, a crop uh, sensor with attached with the 35 millimeter 1.8. That was an equivalent of a 50 millimeter. So for a few years, two, three years, I was using only that lens. So I'm pretty familiar with the 50 millimeter and it's super easy to shoot with a 50. Now this 50 millimeter is a pretty versatile lens. You can shoot a lot of stuff with it. Babies, you can shoot family portraits, whatever. You can shoot fashion, you can shoot uh, interiors. And this actually is my favorite lens to shoot interiors. If you've seen all my videos about interior photography, I'm shooting with this lens a lot. This uh, 50 millimeter stays on my camera for most of the time. Now this lens, second hand, it's around 200 euro, 250 euro, I think. So it's a great, great lens to add it on your camera bag and should be uh, first on your list, you know, because it's very cheap and very versatile. Now, if I'm talking portraits, the king of it is this 85 millimeter. This is the Canon 85 millimeter 1.8. This is a super great lens. This is my favorite lens for portraits. Um, that because it's super small. See that? It's a 1.8. Yes, I know. It's not the 1.2. Uh, maybe one day I will buy that one. I hope the price will go a little bit lower. But... Uh, this lens, it's, it's great to start on if you want to do portraits, fashion. It is a super, super good lens. Um, of course, you're going to have a lot of dust in it, same as uh, the 50 millimeter. But if you shoot pretty wide open, 2.0, 1.8 or 2.8, uh, you will not see any dust in it. So um, I love this lens. It's one of my favorite for portraits and one, whenever I have the occasion to shoot with a 85, I'm shooting with a 85. So I don't care about the 50. I don't care about the 35. I'm, I, I do love to shoot 85 millimeters, especially portraits, fashion kind of uh, close up. This is super, super great lens. I love the 85. Now the thing with the 85, you can separate your subject from the background so it will make that creamish background which I really really love to shoot uh, with the 85 and also it's pretty small I mean compared to a 7 to 200 millimeter which I don't have and I don't uh, own one but it's, it is a zoom so I don't care but the 85 it's pretty small I mean see that you have a 50 and you got an 85 and let's say 35, 1.8, and that's your kit, and you're ready to rock. Now also this lens is pretty cheap. You can buy for, uh, I think, 300 to 350 on a secondhand market. So uh, you don't need to buy the latest and the greatest lens. So stop buying the latest and the greatest um, and the newest because you're gonna end up bankrupt. So buy secondhand, they are very good lenses uh, and they are very good quality. Now my second L glass from Canon, it's this Canon 100mm 2.8 macro lens. This is a fantastic lens. I mean, I just had a shoot with this 
two days ago. And man, this is killing it. I mean, you can shoot portrait with this lens. You can shoot food photography, especially if you shoot details and food and that. Man, this, this lens is super, super great. I love this lens. And uh, what I wanted to do in the future, I want to shoot more with this lens, like beauty uh, shots um, and uh, editorial kind of fashion beauty. So I want to shoot with this lens a little bit more. Uh, this lens is super bookish. I mean, super, you're going to have a super blur background with this lens. Uh, of course, it's not uh, that versatile as a 50 millimeter or 85 millimeter for a portrait uh, because of the, uh, because it's very long, it's 100 millimeter, but it's a kind of a specialized lens. So I'm shooting with this food photography. I'm shooting even details sometimes uh, on my interior. So I might use this much more in the future for interiors which, uh, yeah, it is a super, super great lens. And it has also stabilization, which is very, very good uh, for this kind of uh, long uh, lens. So by now I have actually five lenses. I might add another lens, which is, I think, will be, I mean, a 200 millimeter 2.8, also from Canon, uh, it is a L glass. It's an older version, but man, I need a 200 millimeter in my kit. So I will have from 24 to 200. Uh, I'm not adding a 135. That because uh, I have manual lenses. We're gonna talk about manual lenses, which I really, really love them. I haven't included them here. That because uh, I'm still testing them and. Uh, I am uh, ready to do a video about uh, vintage lenses that I own in my collection. Anyway, uh, the, all those lenses are out of focus. So yeah, when I have to do fast job, I need out of focus lenses. If I am willing to do artwork or kind of YouTube videos, then I might use also manual lenses. Especially I have a lot of 50 millimeters uh, which are great uh, for shooting manual, uh, paired with the EOS R, which uh, helps me with, uh, with the focus because it has uh, focus picking. Now with all this gear, I can cover a lot of genre of my photography, interiors, weddings, uh, what else, events. I'm not shooting sports, so I don't care about that. Uh, but I need to have all of this and I, I know you got to be specialized in something. So I'm specialized in interiors and weddings and kind of a fashion editorial. So those are my main uh, genre of photography. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up and please leave me a comment down below and ask me anything about uh, the gear that I have. And uh, if you have any questions, Please write them down and I will try to answer you uh, as soon as possible. So stay around because I'm coming with more videos about wedding photography, love story shoots, um, interior photography, and of course, of course, business uh, tips for photographers. So guys, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.